Welcome back to the second part of the Rigel DM858 review. This will be the teardown video and I have great news. Uh, in the review video I have identified a bug with regards to the auto ranging function of the uh, multimeter and if you want to know more about it I suggest you watch the review video which I will link on screen right now. But the good news is that I've been in contact with uh, some engineers from Rigel and we already have a fix for that and it doesn't even like require a firmware update it's just a simple skippy command that when you send to the meter and i have already tested this it works it just reconfigures the uh, front end circuitry so the bug is gone the auto ranging function works fine now so i'm gonna wait for a bit more testing on their side before releasing that to the public but just wanted to announce that um, that is fixed and they're, they're also working on the other stuff that I have reported in the video. So let's get on with the uh, teardown. Looks like there's a bunch of screws to remove on the back to get access to the inside. And there goes my warranty. And we're in. It was actually quite easy to get inside of this meter. Just four screws holding it together and it's nicely laid out. Let's take a closer look at this and identify some of the components. Just by looking at this side of the PCB, we can immediately spot the beautiful construction and assembly quality of this instrument. We do notice a few key areas like power supplies in this area, connectivity here, a system on module containing the system processor plus memory on this sodium form factor module, which is quite clever. Uh, input protection in this area. Now there isn't much to say about the uh, power supply uh, section. There is the USB-C input and then just a bunch of switchers and maybe linear regulators to uh, drop the input voltage which I believe is 12 volts to something which is uh, required for the power supply rails of this PCB. We can take out the uh, sodium module and we notice it is using an Owinner A40i-H which is a quad-core Cortex-A7 processor and I don't think I'll go into too much detail uh, this is just your standard affordable modern Android slash Linux capable processor with every peripheral that you can imagine built into this processor now this Sodium module um, includes the processor the RAM chips we have two on this side two on the other side and a power management circuit which is this guy the flash memory which sits on the other side and the other two uh, RAM chips that I mentioned with these complicated processors you do need something like this uh, power management IC and usually the manufacturer of the processor also makes a uh, power management um, circuit and we need that to generate and manage the correct sequencing of all of the different power rails that such a modern processor would require so that's why this module also contains the uh, power management because that needs to be very close to the processor but why do they make it into a uh, sodium module and pay for a separate pcb and then the sodium connector instead of assembling everything on one big pcb well, I'm glad you asked. That's something that is usually decided based on the volume of manufacturing and based on a few other factors like availability, flexibility, the range of products that you might have. And it all comes down to saving costs while having more options available in case of stock shortages. How do you save cost if you have to manufacture two separate PCBs and use this extra connector? Well, that's easy to explain. Now, this big motherboard that we see here could be a four or six layer PCB while this sodium module could be 12 layer or more due to the complexity and density of the required connections now you'll quickly discover that it is much cheaper to make this small PCB in 12 layer and this big motherboard in four layers than it is to make everything on one big 12 layer PCB the rate of defects could be smaller as well for a large batch of small 12 layer PCBs versus a large batch of big 12 layer PCBs and then if something goes wrong with this uh, small sodium module during manufacturing you only have to discard a small module not the entire motherboard which might contain uh, other uh, more expensive components and while doing this you also gain advantages like you can re reuse this sodium module in your other products or you can design and make a new sodium module for a different processor 
if this one is no longer available or you found a better cheaper processor or you want to offer different um, RAM or flash memory no need to redesign the multimeter PCB you just redesign the small processor module and all of this only makes sense at a certain volume and scale if you go any higher or any lower than that threshold it may not make sense financially anymore moving on to our input section we notice this uh, strange looking square PCB which is raised above the motherboard uh, but this one actually holds the uh, user accessible fuse which sits on the front panel we have our second HRC ceramic fuse in here this is for the high current range we have a uh, very big uh, bridge diode rectifier we have a few uh, gas discharge tubes we have uh, metal oxide varistors and maybe some other discrete um, uh, clamping devices this guy here looks like an isolated DC to DC converter so this could be providing uh, power to the input uh, section of the multimeter and between these two sections we do notice this uh, big isolation barrier through the uh, internal PCB copper planes and we also have more isolators uh, in this section uh, which I'm going to I'm going to suspect they're in charge of the data connection between the input section and the digital section underneath this uh, small shield there's a bunch of uh, small relays which probably take care of the input section uh, by switching the appropriate ranges but I'm gonna have to take this apart further uh, to get access to the other side of the PCB so I have removed the, the small shield from both sides of the PCB I've removed all of the uh, screws holding it together so we can now take a closer look at the input section we notice that they have what looks like a uh, hybrid resistor in this black package and surprise surprise a microcontroller with its markings rubbed off you know how I feel about this doesn't make any sense to rub the numbers off you can probably connect JTAG to this and it will willingly tell you its part number uh, or there are various other ways in which you can identify a part number for a, a microcontroller now this microcontroller is likely handling the input maxes um, it switches the uh, relays for the appropriate ranges uh, it probably reads the different dividers to figure out which range to switch to and is either talking to an ADC chip which is separate on the board or it's using um, an internal ADC and sending the readings in a digital format back to the digital side on the other side there is uh, more stuff concerning the um, input section and there's also this pin header which uh, interfaces to the uh, LCD front panel uh, slash keypad uh, and this is likely a uh, MIPI interface with some extra data channels to let the processor know uh, what the keypad is doing but where is the voltage reference you might ask well here it is in this fancy LS8 hermetic package the part number is LTC 6655 and we have the 5 volt output version installed here I'm not sure which specific version because they sell different grades but it does go down to 2 ppm temp code depending on the version you select so quite a decent reference used in here uh, with low noise uh, stable output some other components I identified in here is this 3 peak 1282 precision op amp which claims uh, good AC performance up to 7 megahertz on the other side we have an AD8628 in SOT255 package um, this is a rail to rail op amp uh, but there are also a few chips which I could not identify and I'm gonna put some pictures on screen maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below if you can identify these parts I also wasn't able to identify a separate ADC chip in here uh, so it's either one of the these unidentified chips or uh, maybe they they're using the built-in ADC inside of the microcontroller uh, there are a bunch of tracks you know connecting the uh, microcontroller um, to the um, resistor divider network and there are some microcontrollers out there which have you know multiple channels 16-bit sigma delta ADCs built in 
which are capable of uh, high enough sampling rates so it is doable uh, with the right algorithm and filtering I'm just not sure if they're doing it on here and here is another interesting uh, thing the uh, small square PCB holding the the fuse holder is manufactured on this uh, big panel in this area and is then snapped off uh, from these tabs and assembled here so that's our teardown let me know in the comments below if you know what those unidentified components are would be useful to establish if they are really using the MCU built-in ADC or not other than that the conclusion is as expected you know we have excellent build quality inside this meter excellent soldering and assembly good quality parts and I really really like the fact that they use the exact same screw size for all of the mounting points that's just nice you don't have to worry about what screw goes where that was all on my side uh, thank you for watching this teardown i would appreciate your feedback in the comments below and i will be seeing you next time hopefully with a firmware update which addresses all the issues uh, we found in the review